This is Tim with the University of Vinyl. I'm back today with a new video. You know, I recently saw Vinyl Richie do uh, a top 10 kind of a rapid fire list from 1965. His top 10 albums uh, in no particular ranking, just his favorite 10 albums from 1965. And he invited other members of the VC to jump in on, on this thread. And I thought, hey, I'm gonna do this in Vinyl Richie style, standing up, kind of rapid fire. Uh, I love Vinyl Richie, by the way. This guy is one of the longtime VC members. Great content. He's punk slanted, but he's got an incredible knowledge across the board of great music. I'm gonna leave a link to his uh, best of 1965 video in the comments and in the description. So make sure you check that out. So without further ado, here is my favorite 10 albums from the year 1980. These were all released in the calendar year in the United States in 1980. First of all, Freedom of Choice, Devo, of course it's got Whip It on it. I love this album. Um, these guys just took it to another level with this album. Um, of course we've got that iconic cover and I love the mail order stuff on the back cover. Uh, you too could get uh, your own Devo t-shirt, maybe a flicker button postcards, and of course, the 3D glasses. Let's talk a little bit more about the music on this thing. There is the band on that back cover. This is the first issue, U.S. pressing, Girl You Want. Fantastic way to kick off this album. Already talked about Whip It. Freedom of Choice, the last song on side one. It's got a slow build to it. Absolutely love it. Don't you know? <laughs> on side two, Planet Earth. Doesn't get much better than that. Check out the Devo suits that you could actually mail order as well. Okay, there's number one. Again, I'm not ranking these. This is just the first album I'm talking about. Freedom of Choice. My second choice of 1980, of course, is going to have to be Prince, Dirty Mind. This is a fantastic album. Uh, Prince basically played every instrument on this thing. Um, it sounds incredible. Mastered by Bernie Grundman. Um, you've got When You Were Mine on this. Um, that... Uh, Mitch Ryder eventually covered Head, Sister, Party Up, and kind of a scandalous cover for 1980. I remember going through my local small town record store and actually seeing this thing. And uh, it's a little bit, it's a little bit uh, out there for 1980. That is Dirty Mind Prince. Another masterpiece produced by Steve Lilly White with a huge helping hand from Hugh Padgham, one of my most favorite albums of all time, Black Sea, XTC, come on, Respectable Street, Travels in the Highland, um, Love at First Sight, Rocket from a Bottle. This was my number two pick in my recent ranking video of all the 12 XTC proper albums. I'm pretty sure I chose this number two behind English Settlement. Of course, it's got that kind of famous nautical theme. This came in the kind of pale green, almost like a newsprint uh, paper bag, which I still have, but I took this out just to kind of show this. There's the backside of that album. 
Fantastic album. Permanent Waves, Rush. This is the album that kind of showed the way there were still elements of some longer form uh, progish songs, but there were two or three, especially kind of paving the way towards the next album, Moving Pictures. Um, this is one of the best sounding Rush albums uh, that I have in my collection. The Spirit of Radio, Jacob's Ladder, Free Will, almost a perfect side of music as far as I'm concerned. That is Rush, Permanent Waves. There was a great debut album in 1980. There's actually a couple debut albums uh, from that year I'm going to talk about today. Uh, the first one featured a transplanted girl from Akron, Ohio in the UK. Um, that is, of course, a Pretender's debut album. You know, the two, uh, um, the guitar player and the bass player were dead. Um, I think within 12 months of the release of this album, they came out with Pretenders 2 quite, quite closely on the heels of this thing. Um, but this is a fantastic album. Brass in Pocket, um, of course, is the standout track, but an incredible groove, great guitars, Martin Chambers in the pocket drummer. That is uh, the Pretenders debut album from 1980. Of course, Chrissy Hind as well, right there on the cover in the red. The Boss came out with a huge double album, The River. This was Springsteen's storytelling uh, with a little bit of darkness, but a lot of light as well on this album, The River. Um, Four sides of fantastic music, the ties that bind, Cherry Darling, Hungry Heart, uh, that was a radio hit that came off of side two, Out in the Street, love that song, The River title track, Point Blank, Cadillac Ranch, a huge rave up song, I'm a Rocker, The Price You Pay, Drive All Night, there's a few tear jerkers on this album and like I mentioned some rave ups the E Street Band has never sounded better love this photo love the font love that aqua blue as well on the cover and the title track that is the river from 1980 indescribable raspy bluesy Did I say indescribable? Tom Waits, Heart Attack and Vine. Kind of a concept album. Talking about the back alleys and dark nights of Los Angeles in 1979, 1980. Fantastic Jersey Girl on this album. And just a great all band effort. Tom Waits is, is playing some incredible rhythm and lead guitar. Uh, he's got a very sparse blues riff style that works perfectly on this album. There's also a lot of very, very tasty ham and B. Um, this is kind of an atmospheric album. Of course, if you have never heard Tom Waits, this would be a good place to start. And um, just a great groove to this thing. That is Heart Attack and Vine, Tom Waits, 1980. There's another Steve Lillywhite production going to talk about. That is, of course, U2, Boy, I Will Follow. That, that announcement, first song, side one. What an amazing song to kick off. U2's history into the heart and then uh, um, into out of control two incredible songs finishing up side one the electric co edge is absolutely incredible on this album that guitar um, has never sounded better Adam Clayton is an incredible bass player that is the debut album from U2 came out in 1980, boy. Between 1980 and 1999, what is that, 19 years, there, were, there was gonna be a 19 year break in between 
an album titled as a Steely Dan album. So 1980 was the last time we would hear, hear from these guys until 1999 with two, two Against Nature. This is the 1980 album, Gaucho. This is a masterpiece, in my opinion. And if we never got any other music from Steely Dan, what a way to end things. Babylon Sisters, Hey 19, Glamour Profession. But the real piece de resistance, in my opinion, Time Out of Mind and Third World Man. Um, there's a there's an incredible backstory with this album. I've gone over it in other videos. I'm not going to talk about it today, but also love that cover, cover art. This is just just a masterpiece. Gaucho from 1980, Steely Dan. Hey, Vinyl Richie, thanks for starting this thread. I hope some other people will jump in and fill in some other years. Um, this is this was a fun one. Hope everyone has a fantastic Labor Day weekend. I'm going to throw this up just in time for the weekend. I may or may not get to another video. I am traveling. Everybody, enjoy the weekend. Take care.